Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In the past, I've done videos demonstrating how to use Topaz Labs applications as plugins in Lightroom. Specifically, I'm talking about Sharpen, Denoise, and Gigapixel. After I posted those videos, many people disagreed with my workflow and my methodology. In this video, I want to try to better explain the reasons why I do things the way I do them. Now specifically, I have this image here. It's a shot taken at the zoo, and it's shot at relatively high ISO. ISO is 6400. So I definitely want to send this image over into Denoise. Also, for the sake of this video, let's just say that I want to do a super tight crop onto the head of the bird. So I'm going to be cropping away a lot of pixels, and eventually I want to print it. So I'm going to want to use Gigapixel to uh, increase the resolution of the image. Now, so far on this RAW file, the only thing done to it is lens corrections. And I've mentioned in previous videos that when I send images over into Denoise, I found that Denoise works best, and actually noise re reduction in general works best, if you do it very early in your workflow. So I want to send this over to Denoise very early. The problem is when you send an image over into any Topaz Labs plugin or just about any plugin for that matter from Lightroom, uh, you have a RAW file to begin with, it won't send the RAW file. It's going to send either a TIFF, PSD, or a JPEG. And when you do that, you're going to lose some inherent um, attributes that are in the RAW file. So you want to make sure that you take care of these specific things that are specific to the RAW file before you send that RAW file into the plugin. Because again, it's not going to go in as a RAW file. It's going to go in as a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. Three things you have to be concerned about. One is if you're shooting with a DSLR, make sure you do lens corrections. Now, most often lens corrections will get carried through to those other file types. Sometimes it doesn't. So do lens corrections now. Just make sure you do them if you're shooting with the DSLR. If you're shooting with a mirrorless, you don't have to worry about it because that's built into the raw file and taken care of when you load it in Lightroom. The other two things, go up to the basic tab and take care of white balance. Now, yes, you can adjust white balance in a TIFF or a PSD or a JPEG, but in the raw file, you actually have all the different white balance settings built in, and you'll be able to take care of them right here. Once you convert this to a different file type, you're going to lose all these choices, and you'll have to use the sliders or the eyedropper. So, Definitely take care of white balance if you need to. In this specific image, I don't. The third thing that you need to take care of in the RAW file are camera profiles. Now, I wasn't very clear on this. There's actually three different types of profiles in Lightroom. There are Adobe program, uh, profiles. These are the profiles that come with Lightroom. There are any third-party profiles that you purchased. And then there's another type of profile that uh, they call, if I open up the profile browser, camera matching profile. These are profiles that are unique to this specific camera that I used, and they're loaded in the raw file. As soon as I convert this file to any other file type, I will lose these camera matching profiles. So if you need to use one of these, use it now. Now, um, Specifically on this image, I don't think I want to use any camera matching profile, so I'm good. So I'm going to close that down. So white balance was good. Camera matching profile I'm not going to use. I did apply lens corrections because this was shot with a DSLR. By the way, in the description below the video, I have a list of all the equipment I used. Now, this next part. I mentioned that um, I like to make the image flatter at this point. And I don't crop it. So I won't crop it. I want to send as many pixels as possible over into Denoise. So I'm not going to crop the image yet. I'm going to send the full resolution image. And I also like to make it flatter because I found that that helps Denoise remove the noise more effectively. If I add contrast, if I add texture clarity, I add sharpening, that enhances the noise. And it makes it more difficult for Denoise to remove the noise. A couple people commented that I'm losing dynamic range if I don't take care of my tone now. 
um, because dynamic range is reduced in a TIFF file compared to a RAW file. You know, that is easily Googled. All you got to do is Google it. And if you do, you'll find right at the top, I wrote, what is the dynamic range of a TIFF file? And then right here, a TIFF file has the same dynamic range as the original RAW file. The bit depth is immaterial. A 16-bit file has the same dynamic range as an 8-bit file, but 256 times as many steps for smoother gradients. So send it over as a 16-bit TIFF, and you have the same dynamic range as the RAW file. So I wasn't wrong for doing it the way I'm doing it. Um, I just make it flatter. So I'll bring highlights down. I'll open up shadows. So I'm just making the image flatter at this point. Now I may adjust whites and blacks, but I'm not going to on this image. So really, as far as the raw file is concerned, I'm done at this point. I'm going to send this over to Denoise. I'm just going to right click on it, go down to Edit In, and we'll go down to Topaz Denoise AI. This dialog box pops up, and we're going to create that TIFF file, Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, 300 resolutions, fine. Well, it's going to now create this TIFF. I'll just click Edit and it will bring it over into Denoise once Lightroom creates the TIFF file. Now I'm gonna move it over here uh, over the bird's head and let's just do an auto setting, see what that looks like, I'll click update. And it removed all the noise in the background but there is a, still a considerable amount of noise on the bird. So I'm not going to belabor this uh, and mess around here a lot. So we'll just remove noise to 50 and I'll sharpen it to like 48 and we'll do an update there. Now in real life, I would probably spend a lot more time finessing this to make sure I was removing all the noise. But let's just say this is good enough. I removed most of the noise, tiny bit of noise on the feathers right there, but that's okay. Let's just click apply. So now we have this TIFF file. It's uh, going to be uh, noise reduced. It's still going to have those same tone settings, the shadows and highlight settings that my raw file had, but then I could process it from this point forward. And if I need to crop it, I would crop it now. Again, I wanted to send as many pixels as possible into Denoise because I found that if you crop first, then send it over, it doesn't do as good a job at removing noise. So we have the, the bird's head here and there's the before. So you can see there's a lot of noise in the raw file and there's after. So you can see it looks considerably better. Now at this point, I would just finish my processing and let's um, just, I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's just do a really quick job here. I'm not going to do a lot to this, all right? I would definitely do a lot more in real life, but let's just say that's done. So actually the image is done as far as I'm concerned and I would probably then share this on social media or whatever. But again, for the sake of this video, let's just say that I wanna use Gigapixel now at this point. So what I would probably do is, um, well, I wanna use Gigapixel because I'm going to crop it. But what I would probably do in real life is I would create a virtual copy first because I want this full uncropped image to be intact. So I'm going to create a virtual copy on my Mac by holding in the command key and hitting the single quote or the apostrophe key. And that creates a virtual copy. If you have a PC, you'd hold the control key in instead of the command key. Now I'll just go to the crop tool and let's just do this really crazy. I want to make it vertical too. I'll hit the X key to make it vertical. And let's just do this, this really obnoxious tight crop like that. Okay. So we're going to accept it. Now we have this really tight crop, but I want to print it. So if I look at the resolution of the image, I see it's 2074 by 1383. And just off the top of my head, I probably wouldn't be able to make a five by seven with that. So I need to, I want to make, let's say a, a much larger print. So I need to use Gigapixel. So at this point, then I would send it to Gigapixel. I'll right click on it. I'll go down to edit in and I'll go down to Gigapixel AI. And I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And the reason why I have to do that, first of all, it's a virtual copy. But second of all, I cropped it. So I got to make sure that crop carries through uh, to the image I'm sending into Gigapixel. We'll stay with those settings there and we'll click Edit. So now it's taking this image. It's sending it over into Gigapixel. 
and it's going to generate a preview because I have that checked over here on the right hand side. See what it looks like. And you can see it does, it adds sharpening to, to it automatically. And let's just go with the 2x. At 2x, I'm 4148 by 2756. So I think I could, off the top of my head, probably get an 8 by 10 out of that at least. So we'll click save for the sake of this demonstration. Now, one thing I don't often do, as a matter of fact, I don't remember doing it ever, is I don't use sharpen in conjunction or with gigapixel and denoise. Um, I'll use sharpen usually only if I have a blur problem with my image because I didn't nail focus most often, or sometimes maybe there's movement, and then I'll use sharpen to correct that. Um, the reason why I don't like using it with um, gigapixel and denoise is because giga, gigapixel and denoise add sharpening to the image already. So you'd be kind of adding sharpening on top of sharpening on top of sharpening. So that's why I don't like to do it. All right, now here is our 4148 by 2766 image. And we'll go back to our smaller image, 2074 by 1383. And I don't know if you could see. It looks pretty much identical. Little, little blurrier on the small one. Uh, the larger one's a little sharper, just a tiny bit. So um, I'm consider that done. So that is my workflow and the reasoning why I do things the way I do. The main points of this video I wanted to try to stress is on the raw file, make sure you do lens corrections, white balance, and a camera profile if you're going to use it. Do that to the raw file. Then if you're going to use denoise, make the image flat by moving usually usually highlights down, shadows up, and that will make the image a little flatter, so less contrast. Send it over to Denoise. When you come back from Denoise, process it as you normally would and crop if you need to crop at that point. Um, if you're going to use Gigapixel, then use Gigapixel and you should be done. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.